like pretending I'm a musician in Music City. This is my, my instrument. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> I came in the winter storm. I, I got at the, I was at the airport yesterday and the winter storm came up. Flights were being cancelled and delayed and mine was okay. And I got on the plane and I sat there. It was really hopeful and then suddenly the guys in the fluorescent jackets came on and I was shrugging their shoulders and talking to the pilot and then we had to get off the plane. Anyway, I'm here. And it's Music City to be kind of like hot. Well, it is hot, but no way. Uh, so, how many pe people are from Nashville here? Oh, wow, okay, great. I, I've already met some folks that aren't from here, but have come a long way. Um, anyone from outside the US here? Woo! Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think we should do a warm up. I think we should. If you're like me, you need a bit of an exercise. Okay, so, this is the left, this is the left of the audience, this is the right of the audience, okay? So, we're gonna sing a little song. Okay. Um, now, the left is gonna start standing, if you can, if you can stand. Stand, please. If you can't, just you have to just go through the. the, the are you? No, 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 sit. Sit. Stand. Okay. Now, so we're going to sing a little song. Who knows? My pony lies over the ocean. You know it? Okay. So, we're all going to sing it left and right. But, the first time we say a word beginning with B. We sit down or we stand up. Uh -huh. Okay, we're going to see who wins this particular competition. We ready? Who's in some of these little rhythm? Okay, we all ready? You ready to stand on the first B? Are you ready to sit on the first B? Oh dear. Yeah? Yep. We, we understand I'm what we're doing. I'm saying that for this. Yes, yes. I, I'm an actor. I'm not very good at giving directions. <laughs> all right, okay, so are we ready? I can't sing, I can <laughs> Alright, here we go. My body lies over the ocean. My body lies over the sea. My body lies over the ocean. Oh, bring back my body to me. <laughs> Relax 
I'm from the future. Ooh. <laughs> it is a bit like that too, it's ooh. And you know, Wicked Stars is a great friend and somebody that's very good at doing it. Reese Darby, do you know Reese Darby? Ooh. Yes, oh, yes, hi, yeah, he's great. Um, so, he's in it and he plays this sort of slacker from the future that's visiting our current times. And it's kind of not really supposed to be in our current times. And he's doing it for his own purposes. And it's kind of funny, yeah? Well, he is funny. You can't stop being funny. I, I love it. Um, so, yes. Just thought I'd tell you. <laughs> there's, there's life after death. Okay, you don't have to listen to me rabbiting on about myself and self-promoting. All right, that's the bigger lot. So let's start over here. Actually, I'm going to get in the mood. Hang on. The line might get long. I think, I think I'm supposed to be sitting here like a mature adult. But I, I can't, I'm too twitchy. I drive my wife crazy. I can't keep still, so I'm going to keep moving around. Hello, first question. Um, um, so, just the season started, like, literally, right after Thanksgiving, and I think we all have one here, but is there a Christmas song that you would love to never play? The least now they die. Go on and on and on and on. And then, and, and, but it's one of those that you find yourself humming about 30 minutes later. Why am I so happy and angry all at the same time? So that's, that's my good question. How about yours? Do you have one? I do, but I don't know if I want to sing it. Oh, okay. Well, we didn't, all right, well. We'll, we'll find out privately later. We'll have a, a sing-off, like an angry sing-off. <laughs> well, I think it's really cool that here we are in Music City, and we start with Christmas carols. That is really good. Yeah, thanks for the question. That's great. Thank you. Well, I'll go over here now. Here we go. I, just in case you can't hear me or see me. I don't know why I have to come over here and gesticulate, but I do. Anyway, hi. Uh, do you have a favorite memory of um, doing the Umbrella Academy? Oh, yeah. the Umbrella Academy. Everybody know the Umbrella Academy? Yeah! Well, I was very, very fortunate to be in season three, and I had one of those dream roles where uh, I didn't really do much. I'm, I'm sort of the hotel manager. <laughs> And, but I got to interact with all the cast in different ways, just being this obnoxious hotel manager. So it's kind of fun. Um, it's good things. Anecdotes. Um, um, no, not really. I, I, I've never worked with any of the folks except Elliot. Elliot Page, who I worked with previously in a different show many years ago. So it was very cool to work with him. Um, uh, and, oh, I'm just trying to think. What? There were a couple of times, oh, my favorite bit was the wrapping up of the rug. Do you remember when, the, when uh, the, 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 they're playing and, the, and the, he gets away with it by saying, oh, we just play a man in rug. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And so, it's, that's sort of a classic actor thing where it looks really straightforward to the audience if it works, but when you're actually trying to do it, it's impossible because you, the, the gag is that one actor is completely wrapped up in a row, being carried along and put down. And uh, it just is very hard to execute, you know, so it's like, no, we need that rug half an inch to the left. So it's, okay. Put it there. No, quarter of an inch back. No, no, no. So actually, the, one of the funniest gags, which I thought was really great, it was 
it was a painstaking gag, should we say that, you know, and it was also uh, very exhausting to do for, for all concerned. But other than that, I, can, I can't say, um, I'm very fortunate in that, like Supernatural, everybody in the cast was really friendly and cool, and um, whereas with Supernatural, most of the activity centers around the two boys. In Umbrella Academy, it centers around all the seven siblings, right? So there's a lot more energy going on, but every one of them is really friendly and really pleasant, so I'm very lucky. Thank you. What's my favorite? I've got lots. I'm very lucky. I'm a character actor, so I've done tons and tons of stuff, and I've never ever felt that I've been trapped in a particular role. Um, but I've often been in shows that I've thought, wow, this is great. I'd love to expand on this character, or there's a lot of potential. So uh, there's a couple that I, I really felt like that. Um, one was that I played a punk legend, kind of like an Iggy Pop kind of guy, in a movie called Hardcore Logo, which is a Canadian independent movie about the reuniting of a punk band. And I played this kind of reclusive icon. His name's Bucky Haight. <laughs> Don't laugh! <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> sort of thing, you know. I can't be cool. Sort of in a different, other than death way. <laughs> My head's receding a bit. Let's stick it up. Anyway, I, it, I, I grew up with punk uh, as a kid. As a kid, as an adult, actually. That's the sad reality. Uh, but I, I loved it and I loved sort of embodying a lot of my heroes. So I really enjoyed doing that show. And I sort of, I realized that we all like to uh, kind of do versions of, of channel our favorite people, uh, our, our heroes, and a lot of mine are musicians. So I really enjoyed that. Um, in the future, what would I like to be? What universe? Oh, I don't know, really. I, Honestly, I, I'm not one of those actors that say, you know, I'd really like to play Hamlet, or I'd like to be the lead in a Game of Thrones franchise or something. I just like um, being surprised and um, sort of jumping into whatever universe is created for me. So, there you go. Thank you. All right. Hello. Hello. Um, between the writing, and the directing, and you as an actor, what played the largest part in creating the character? Oh, that's a great question, and I don't know that there's a there's a fixed answer to it. Um, in the, it sort of shifts a little bit. It depends on how intense the director is, or what kind of story it is. So, for, to illustrate that, I, I did a series of TV called John Woo's Once a Thief. John Woo is a great action director um, and has a very particular style. And so the, the way that he interpreted the written text was very, very specific. And it required me surrendering all my ideas from the script to the director. The director would go, no, 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 I want you to do this because it was very visual, right? There are many writers that write stuff that gives me clues, like Supernatural, for instance. That first scene in the pizza parlor was such a great uh, scene, so beautifully written, because it had all the colors of um, death being uh, jealous, not jealous, but um, envious of humanity, having an appetite, liking junk food, liking Dean, as if he was some sort of like naughty nephew. There's a sort of great humanity to it, even though he's the most powerful person in the universe, right? So there's a great contradiction in there, in the writing, which I played, and, and I was able to sort of bring out. So I was really um, obedient to what was written there. And the director didn't impose anything else other than to just try and get that story. So, so to answer your question, I think it just shifts, and it, it, it's, it depends according to the kind of movie it is, the kind of script it is, and the character that you're portraying. Often the characters that I do 
are what I think of as like a primary color, like um, like people like Jensen and uh, Jensen and Jerry uh, carry, carry the show. You know, they carry the storyline, the arc of the show from the beginning to the end, and that's a big weight. So it's necessary for people like me to come in and kind of here I am, you know, and to present a character that's larger than life or a primary color on the canvas so that they can react and that keep their journey interesting. And so that's sort of the, the situation I find myself in most of the time. So anyway, I could go on for hours for that question. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so um, it's a, it's more like a low budget film. Uh, we just showed it at a Fantasia festival in Montreal, and it will be released sometime in the new year. Um, it's called Relax Up from the Future, and uh, Reese is in it, and he is hilarious. He's kind of him. I, I wouldn't say himself. He's very much this character, but it relies on his energy. And he is just, he, I, I can't watch it without laughing. I, like, I get this glow every time I'm in his presence where he just, he makes me want to giggle. And uh, it's a real pleasure and I think you'll find that he does that in the film too. Um, but there's, the film also goes to some different places. It's not just on a funny level, it, 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 it investigates the idea of what is important to our lives now and what will not be important in a hundred years' time and what will we do we take far too seriously in our here and now. So it's look out for it. Relaxing from the future. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Um The first what? Celebrity crush. Celebrity crush. Woo! Um, I, I think. So I, a drama. When I was learning my drama craft, I um, we did a whole series of exercises of walking, like based on walking. Right? And uh, our teacher would say, "Okay, walk." Now. Where do you lead, like, lead with your body? Because it, the whole thing took place over a series of weeks, actually, where we were learning about the influences of the way we moved and what we did and how we dressed. And I realized that as a kid growing up in England who wore school like shorts, you know, like Harry Potter, I was like, <laughs> socks, you know, satchel, cap, you know, walking around like this. Um, yes sir, no sir, and all that stuff. I realized that the biggest influence on my life was this band that came on in the 60s. Not the Beatles, <laughs> but the Rolling Stones. Woo! Uh, and I, I realized that whenever I was supposed to play somebody that was cool, it's funny because already in, the, in this panel I, I sort of did my cool rock star walk. It's all based on one man, Mick Jagger, because he was the first man that I took that wore jeans or sneakers and kind of walked with his hips. So it's sort of like... <laughs> so, I, like, I'm exaggerating, right? But he, he... I couldn't believe it. It was like, oh my God. You know, he was almost on a different plane than, than everybody else that I've ever seen him sort of... Uh, sexy, um, dynamic, I, I don't know, you can name any, any words, and, and, and revolutionary too. So he, he changed the way that, oh, and I realized that all my friends too, whenever we were hanging out together, like we'd be in school like this, and then we'd go out for a break, and then we'd be... <laughs> And, and you know, and all, all the kids are smokers, like having cigarettes and stuff. 
So I think, yeah, Mick Jack. Okay. Okay. It's a British accent, but it's soft. It's soft, right? It's mid-Atlantic is what they say. Um, and it depends who I'm talking to, right? So it shifts and changes. If I'm talking to my kids, it's, I kind of get Canadian and shut up. You know. <laughs> and, um, but if I, if I talk to anybody from England, I start getting very English. So American. But I realized that it's, English people can do southern accents pretty easily. There's some, something about the way some people can talk that's kind of easy for uh, English people. Uh, 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 walking Dead. Woo! Uh, it's a really, it does, I think it does a really good accent. To my ear, now that, this is an English ear hearing accent. To my ear, he does it. So I can do a southern accent, but to my ear, it sounds a bit cartoony. The, 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 uh, it's not true. So what I try to do is do a neutral American accent. So I'll try and give it a go. Here we go. You can't like so to, to talk to talk in an American accent. You know, to talk in the back of your throat. <laughs> How am I doing? How am I doing? Uh, well, when I first arrived in Chicago, I did a series in Chicago with Patriots, a great series. The, the driver picked me up and uh, he pulled the door open and he goes, Hi, I'm Bob. <laughs> Bob. Bob. Hello, Bob. Yeah, Bob. 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 So, there's lots of. Uh, sort of but the Chicago accent I can't get, and Boston I can't get, but I, I just do this thing in the back of my throat. Um, no, no, it's Southern. <laughs> so it's not great, it's not great. But in the Midwest, they nasalize all their vowels. Say, say that again. In the Midwest, they nasalize all their vowels. Bow. So like mom, mom, mom. Yeah. my mom. Bad. Bad. <laughs> all right, thank you. Thanks so much. Hello. Oh, yeah. I noticed a lot of cultural differences between Sri Lanka and America. I was just wondering what cultural differences you think between England and America. Tea. Yes. <laughs> I, I asked for tea. And I got this cold drink with ice cubes in it. It's not tea. And you, you're from Sri Lanka, you should know that too. They're funny, these Americans. <laughs> Where's the Yorkshire tea? What's that? Where's the Yorkshire tea? <laughs> Where's the Yorkshire tea? Oh, Yorkshire tea, aye. Right, <laughs> ten, but yeah, absolutely. Um, what else? Uh, I, I love it. I love all the cultural differences. i tell you one thing that, that I, now I go back to England and I have to have cold beer. I drive my brothers crazy. I'll go and I'll go, oh, it's too warm. That's not warm beer. And then we have this big argument about warm beer. So, uh, so I, I've been changed to the American way of drinking beer. Oh, that's, that's, that's a good American one. Beer. You guys say beer. Uh, yes, so uh, I don't know any others. Uh, I, you know, I like the differences, so, so I actually enjoy it. Thank you. All right. Something. Every like I would. Do, I did a show in like season ten. Then I would get invited back to do a show in season eleven. Great. And then invited back to season twelve. Great. And then I'd arrive and I'd say, Oh, uh, do you want to take me to wardrobe? No, you're still wearing the same thing. And each time I, I and then each time I came back I go, same old, same old, yes. Because obviously they liked the way I looked. And I, I was thinking, well I'm becoming a more important character now. Maybe I'll have a, like a whole selection of suits and things. No. So I guess I'm a victim of my own success. So there you go. There, there's, there's a minor complaint, but I actually I like suits. So it was great. There you go. Hello. What do you think Jeff's favorite fast food would be? Favorite? Fast food. 
Fat soup. <laughs> Sorry, there's a combination of accent and acoustics. Fast food, my favorite. Oh, Dad's favorite fast food. Well, I. The funny thing is, I do like fast food. Julie, like, I really like it. The, the one that I've never had before was uh, pickle chips. That was a revelation. <laughs> that was. And that was. It's kind of an extraordinary experience, too, because you put it in and. You, you can't stop your body reacting to it. It's not like a burger or a tortilla or something where you kind of can take it and continue to act. But a pickle chip is kind of extraordinary. It's an explosion in your mouth. <laughs> so that was the biggest experience. And, and I, I, I guess uh, my, my most enjoyable thing. I, I would never look at a Chicago pizza again. <laughs> So, so yeah, I'll go with the chips. All right, thank you. Hi, so I just wanted to ask you, uh, what was the most memorable part about playing death on Super Nintendo? The most memorable part. Oh, uh, well, probably the same stuff, right? Um, the food. Um, the, I didn't get out much either. I didn't, I'll just complain here. I didn't get made much more drunk, but I didn't get out a lot. Well, I guess I, I was in charge. Ah! Hello, guys. You're saving me. You're giving the same answer as I think. Yeah, I think I'm going to say uh, the food. All right. You're talking about British food again, eh? What? You're talking about British food? No, British food. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say it, because the Irish food is probably just as bad. More potato based, I think. Oh, no, uh, uh, here we go. We're going to have a famine argument. An Irish man and an English man walk into a bar. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But um, the British is soggy. Soggy is the soggy biscuits. The, 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 the English. Anyway, um, it's been lovely. Thank you so much. For oh. you.